please, yeah, this is the Middle East. Then uh, they would, uh, would gun up to shoot you. Mm -hmm. I'm the Middle East there with my camera. Wow. So now tell me, your, your, okay, this one is you. Yeah, it's me. Oh, this is the Goku's time. I was like this, so you can see the chap back is a scout. Is there is a scout man standing there. Mm. No, this was the new man thinking, that camera. Okay. So the beginning of the cameras were using you you know, the film school type, mm. time. And I, was, I went there to film the football. I was shooting football, you know. So that was... Do you remember the match, the teams that played that particular match? Oh, it was, uh, I think, uh, it, it, what this local... Was it played in Accra? Yeah, it, it is. It is, it is it Accra Olympics, Hearts of Folk? Um, maybe. Yeah, it could be one of it those. It could be one of those, okay. Yeah. What, 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 what's your best moment, I asked you before, with Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah? You remember where you visited with, you traveled with him, your best times with him? My best time mm. with Kuma. Uh, how, how do I call it the best time? You know, the one good thing I liked, I enjoyed about him was, you know, before traveling, Mm -hmm. Nkuma would call me one on one and we sit sit here together mm -hmm. and he would tell me if we, we anytime we're traveling outside, mm -hmm. he would tell me, look, okay, let me take an example like India. So we are we on the he, he will be traveling to India on a state visit. So he would discuss the whole thing, the trip with me, the reasons why he accepted the trip, uh, uh, that invitation to go to India. Because they, they, produce, they do this, they do this, uh, which we have to go and see and, and f copy. You know, he would tell me the reasons why we were, were going. And then if, if it's um, a conflict like addressing the UN, we, or the OAU, mm. we also talk about them. He'll give me a copy of the speech. Okay. And we'll tell him to go through and just to shoot his vision. Mm. And, and, you know, his vision of the trip. You know, he had a plan. A plan. Yeah. Mm. So he would discuss the whole thing with me. And his final statement would say, but, my son, you are the filmmaker. I'm not telling you what to shoot, but I'm telling you my idea of this trip, and it's, I expect you to translate my thoughts onto film. You were very young then. Were you the only very young person with him that time? Only by the young person, as, as filmmaker. No, I mean other departments and offices working with the president, uh, because I was told yesterday that Kwame Nkrumah had a very huge interest in young people, bringing very, very, very young people to work with him. Yeah, it, it, that, that, that is a, it, it's a fact. Okay. Because, see, uh, people, the, 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 the young chaps, like the, the Heyman, Eric Heyman, Charles Heyman, and all those beautiful writers. Okay. Uh, um, I've missed someone. Uh, the, the writers had the um, uh, um, evening news and those things. Mm -hmm. you know, those boys, they were, they were good writers. So, you know, you, you know that Nkrumah himself was a writer. He was writing the editorials for the evening news. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, on GTV? Ghana Broadcasting? No, for the editorial for, for the, the evening news. 
The OSA paper call evening, evening, evening news. news. Okay, I don't know of that. Oh, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were not born. <laughs> yes, I was not born. <laughs> yeah. So the president himself was writing the editorial. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was a writer. He was writing the editorial. He was writing he, his speech. He was writing all his speeches. And he would never, we are never, I've never seen Nkrumah sleeping in the plane. When we are on, on, on flight. Hey. I've never seen him sleeping. No. One, I will, I will either be writing or reading. He doesn't sleep? No, 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 no. We'll be writing or sleep or, 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 or writing or, or reading. Wow. Uh, he, was, he was always doing something at this end. When flying, you know, I always carry my camera with him as if something will happen. Because most of him, like, at times you will see sunrise, beautiful, it just signal me, look at that, take it, take that shot, it's beautiful. Now take it. Oh yes, through the window, through the. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any some challenges that you went through as a young cinematographer working closely with the president? Any challenges? Challenges that you went through? I don't say challenges. What type of challenges? Any, any type of challenges that you went through as a young cinematographer? Eh. Hey, hey. When, when, when you, you work around Nkrumah, Nkrumah was an artist. Mm. So you see, when, as I was we traveling, he would stop and say, take that shot. Take, 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 take. You see the mountain, the river, take that shot, you know. And on few occasions, where I had fallen off, you know, he grew, he, he became annoyed and, you know, on few cases I've been sacked. He has sacked me. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. He sacked you? Oh, he sacked me because Why? I don't want to see him. Was he angry with you or yeah, yeah, he, was he was angry he, with he, someone he, else no, that... He was, he was, he was angry. You know? With you? Yeah, with me. What, what happened, know? if you remember any of them? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to know <laughs> what, what happened that Nkrumah got angry with you. Let me give you an example. Okay. We attended the Prime Minister's Conference. Okay. In, Accra, in London. No, in Prime Minister's okay. Conference, Commonwealth. Commonwealth in London. Commonwealth okay. in London. And there, at the end of the Commonwealth, I think he had an invitation mm -hmm. to come over. At that time, uh, the northern side of, of Africa, mm -hmm. and not had their independence. So uh, most of them had uh, their government in exile. So they had an invitation to stop over in Morocco. And it was at that time when uh, one day, I will remember, when they died there. So we went to Morocco to see the then king. And he met with the the that government in Desire. And after discussion, I quite a whispered into in years of Tam Adam Afu, mm -hmm. that I was running out of film negatives, you know, film my stock. And at that time, my boxes had been taken to the airport. We were, mm -hmm. we were that, it was that day we were leaving. And that visit to, uh, to meet the, that, uh, that government in exile <coughs> was an additional program, additional attending uh, the program. So he asked me to film it. 
within the meeting. And that took a lot of my, 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 my film. So I decided I had to rush to the airport because from that scene we were mm -hmm. going to the airport. And I had to shoot the departure. You see, so I rushed to the, to the airport to recharge my battery, my, my, my camera, okay. my film. And he waited, not knowing that he waited, and instructed the script to find me, to come and take some beautiful flowers. He loved, you know, he loved natural things, you know, beautiful flowers behind the residency, and mm. he wanted some shots of that. And I wasn't around, but Adam Murphy was there. Mm. And but he needed you to do that. No, no, no. He, and Adam Murphy didn't explain, didn't, he had the courage at that time to explain to the old man that I had obtained permission from him to go to the airport. You know, and so when he was asking, about me, I had then gone, gone to the airport. To the airport, then I, I, obtained, I informed, I officially informed that Dama Few that I was in. He was then the minister for information. So I went. And after some time, they came, they arrived at the airport. Mm. And me, he came out of the car. I was filming the departure now at the airport. Then he stopped. <laughs> and called you. He called me. And his first question, why did you run away from me? <laughs> <laughs> See? Hey, it was terrible. It was terrible. At the airport. At the airport. And he called Kweku Bwateng. Mm -hmm. Kweku was a uh, minister of defense or something, you know. What could you do then? I don't want to see him again. Hey, so get a fly. Let him fly, fly back in. I want to. I don't want to see him again. He spoke that he was annoyed. <laughs> so why is he was taking? He was talking. I said, sir, I I spoke to Honorable Adam Afiu. I informed that I was running out of stock, so I had to rush to the airport to prepare myself for mm -hmm. your arrival. Then I don't want to say, say, yeah, then say, keep quiet. I wasn't, I wasn't talking to you. Mm. Keep quiet. Then I said, I don't want to you were with me. Why didn't you tell me? So keep quiet. So you were forgiven. No, I wasn't forgiving. No, he was annoyed. He said he didn't want to see me. But <laughs> I, I, I was shooting. I was shooting because you were still shooting. this man, man, this sack, I've, I've explained this sack several times. So okay. I was shooting. I was, <laughs> I was, I was working. Uh, oh, I've been sacked several times. <laughs> you were sacked several times by the president. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He will sack you and call you. He will sack you and call you. No, after the sack, you know, wait, wait, call, call, call my son, call my son, where is he? Where he has sacked me. <laughs> so, so at the airport, okay. you know, I shot them. And he saw me shooting. I was working. Saw me shooting. And when traveling on a rubber, I was the first person to come down. Mm. So and, you can take and beautiful departure. pictures. I'll be the last person to climb the plane. So you were going to travel on the same flight with him? Oh, yeah. We are on the Ghana Airways. Okay. And we're coming back. And from London, we stop at the... Uh, what is it? Rabatos. Yeah. Mm. And we're coming back. So after I finished, I climbed the plane. He said, you wouldn't like to see me. He said, go back to arrange the flight for me and get me out. <laughs> but I climbed the plane. Yeah, I knew that I would be the last person to come to enter the plane, then the doors will be closed. So I went in. And when I went in, it was there, I passed by him. He didn't say anything. 
<coughs> and then the flight took off. And when we were halfway through, he called me. He sent for Kuwaitan to call me to, to come there with, with him. Mm. So yeah, that Kuwaitan was Minister of Information. Okay. And Adam Mafia was Minister of Establishment. Okay. So I went to Kwekubaten. So he asked Kwekubaten, ask him whether he, he didn't talk about the sack, mm -hmm. whether I shot the departure at the airport. I told, I told him, yes, sir, I did it. And then Kokubatin said, yes, sir, he did it. Then he asked Kokubatin, can you confirm? I hold you responsible because you are speaking for him. So you know, I hold you responsible. Then Kokubatin said, hey, he just turned around and look at my face and said, hey, hey, did you shoot that thing? <laughs> <laughs> After he confirmed. I say, you know, you know, I knew I shot it. Okay. So I was relaxing. And Gogubato was shaking. Yeah, yeah. So I said, oh, took it. <laughs> so we came to Accra. We arrived there. I sent the rushes back to London for processing. Mm. No, that's not, we, haven't, we haven't got the color lab here. So I sent it to London for processing. And then rushes came for editing. Mm. No, no, go back. I don't have a good sleep. Hey. Yeah, so he rushed to the office. Say, where is the material? The rushes. Then we showed him. Ah. So he took to flash. I showed to the president. No, the rushes on on unedited unedited rushes. This is the president. Say, he, he shot it, so I can prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so he so, so, go back. Go back. To go back, and then. No, you see, but uh, apart from all jokes, let's put all jokes aside. Kwame Nkrumah, if working around Kwame Nkrumah was, it, 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 I would say difficult, but you should be ready on call. You know, you should be ready, you see, and you should be prepared. Any time. Any time. Look, I'll, I'll go. When, when he was overthrown, <laughs> when he was overthrown, Kukubati, Guys, are you listening? When I do that, you tell me, eh, nye, 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 <laughs> When he was overthrown, Kukubaten made a, a, a statement. He made a statement, which was true, and, and I, as I, in, interpreted that statement in my heart. Oh, what yeah. did he say? What was the statement? He said, oh, Nkrumah made S. I mean, his cabinet gave him sycophants. What sycophants? Gaping. Gaping sycophants. Sycophants. Oh. Did he tell you the reason why he made that statement? No, no, no. He spoke, he spoke on air. Oh, on air, okay. On radio. At that time, Nkrumah had been overthrown. Mm. And some of these ministers were, were um, being interviewed. So he made a gaping sycophant. I said, oh, my God. Rock Kubatin saw himself. See, but the reason was that mm -hmm. Nkrumah, before cabinet, you know, he, mm. knew, he knew the subjects mm. to be discussed. And if it's about Akosombo, Akosombo building, or this project, or hospital building, or this structure, which will be discussed mm -hmm. because of maybe financial constraints or something, he will ask the secretary to the cabinet in Okokon to get him files on all those subjects the cabinet 
and he will go through the file, read all correspondence, read all the letters okay. in the file before the cabinet meeting. So by the time cabinet, the, uh, the, meeting, the cabinet meeting will come on, he had done his homework. He knew all the details. So at cabinet meeting, he will ask you, the minister. You no, know, he will be talking to you, your minister, your home. Directly. Directly, asking you questions about this subject, this subject. We are here, we are discussing this. So what are you doing about this? But this letter, which was written, what was the reply? What happened to this? And you, the minister, then you sit down, and then you become a gaping sickle fan. Mm. Because you have, not, you have not done your work. You have not done your homework. But he had read. Yeah, Nkuma <laughs> was a good reader. Look, one day we were going to shoot film towards a full life. Okay. And in the, if we were, the, the day before we started the shooting, he sent you know, the uh, secretary to the cabinet mm -hmm. to, and brought a message that he has heard that we were, the Ghana Film Corporation was going to shoot an interesting film. And he, he would like to read the script. So he said, we gave him a copy. Mm -hmm. And we gave a copy to him to send to the president. This was about five o'clock when we were closing. Wow. And it was a 45-page script. That, that's a small pages to read. Pardon? I said that's a very small page. <laughs> book. Yeah. I mean, something to be read. Is yeah. 45 is just... No, 40, <laughs> no when I talk, it's just, it's just no, 45 pages. Yes. And the one page is as long as this. Oh, it's not the normal book size. No, it's not the normal, it's a script. The script, that long thing. Yeah, correct. And by 8 o'clock, when we reported for, and Okokon was here, waiting for us. And, that is and he, brought, he brought the script. He brought the script. He said, oh, I brought the script back, but he had, the old man has made his comments. So, so check it. So he read the movie script, the script and, and, and made comments. And, made, and from the comments, we could see that he had at least read the, uh, the script for, uh, on, for 10 times. Hey. And he made reference. Please, oh, please refer to page two, second paragraph. Is this an agreement with African unity? Mm. Uh, please go to page. 22. Uh, is it, this, is not our, this is not the Ghanaian culture. Is it because he was young or you would say that he was called for that particular responsibility to be a president? Is it because he was young? Because you are not the first to say this. People say that he will wake up very early, go through books, go through letters, go through a lot of things, he'll be reading this, he'll be watching that. Kwabi Nkrumah will not have the time to sleep. He's always on the run, moving from this region to that region, trying to establish this factory, trying to put this here, trying to do this, trying to do that. Is it because he was young? Or you were with him? Or he had but a certain I was agenda. with him, and if I, I was younger than him, and I was, I was, I was feeling the pain. Ah. I was feeling the pain. So you, you were younger than Kwame Nkrumah. Oh yeah, yeah. I was younger than him. He was older than myself. But his energy levels but were he more was than pushing, you. Pushing. Pushing. And pushing me too. When he was pushing the knee, he was pushing me because mm -hmm. I have to swim. And and I couldn't say good night until he had retired. Ah. Yes. First of all, I was first of all, the vehicles come to my house. The, 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 the uh, uh, first of vehicle picks me at 5 a.m. in the morning from my house. And I tell 5 a.m.? 5 a.m. And I tell I get to about 12. 
12 midnight. So when I come here at 5 and I leave at 10 p.m., you guys don't talk. Oh. Don't talk anymore. Old boy was 5 a.m., 12 midnight. Yes, yeah. 5 a.m., 12, 12 midnight. Then uh, until he says good night. You can't say good night. I, I, no, 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 no. Because no, you no. can't tell when he's moving. Correct. And something happens. Oh, come in. Look, tomorrow we have to go to... Uh, you know. He was just sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sharp. He was working. What, what, what would be your, your description of Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and leaders we've had after him? How would you describe them? I mean, the leaders, even in the Fourth Republic, I mean, Rollins, Kofu, Mills, Mahama... Nado, I mean, the few ones that we've gone to the polls to elect them. Look, after having worked with Nkrumah and you know, the uh, pre President Rawlings, mm -hmm. I have, me personally, mm -hmm. I've decided that the work of a president is not something I will envy. I will never, I will never, if you give me on the plate, I will take it. Ah. Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, I won't take it. You don't have peace of mind. If you're a president, you don't the, have a peace of mind. The president, they suffer. Oh, no, no. I always go down my knee and pray for them. They suffer too much. Our presidents. No. I would not have to be a president. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> no, they suffer too much. You see, because... They are just, they are the better call of the public. At times, having, having worked hard against women, chain of people. Oh, the 95 people sitting there waiting for him. Family people, oh God. Family people. Country people. <laughs> and then some uh, <coughs> political people, ministers, you know, they're waiting. We say yes, yes, and the, 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 no time for the him president to rest. is tired. tired, but he can go home. And the person who suffers most in the presidential house is the first lady. The wife? Yeah. You don't see him? You don't see your husband. No, I mean, I tell you, they sit behind the, the, waiting for the president to come and have dinner. Oh, it's a pity. <laughs> and they are working. This one will come. I will say, I want to discuss this. This one. Will come. And then the family. Look. Our presidents, eh? I can say that they are. Our presidents are honest people. But the pressure. On them. On them. The pressure. You know, nobody knows how much they are paid. You know, people come and say, you have, you have the Bank of Ghana in your pocket. Your, the whole bank of Ghana money is in your pocket. So come here. Oh. I, could see, I could see school fees, you know. It's, it's the family people, the family, they are talking about the broken home, the house numbers have to be repaired. And you are the, the man, you are hmm. the man, you are the president, you are the, you know. The, the, I mean, they, 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 they expect you to pay for everything. They expect you to do everything for they, that's why you are there. That's why they, they, they look. You been there. That boo boo, Charlie. <laughs> because you are sitting there. We we we, we are proud of you. you no, know, you are from this family too. So do something. <clears throat> but your wife also suffered the same thing. I mean, you're always on the run with the president until he says good night. You can go home. Yourself, yes. so your yes. wife will also be waiting. Oh, at times I, I receive dams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I take the spillovers in my house quietly. But, <laughs> mm. Kwame established a lot of factories, a lot of companies. I'm sure, I mean, everything happened right under your nose and eyes. Which of the companies that he established that was so dear to him? If you remember. Oh, almost. 
almost everything, you know, the, the, the rubber plantation, you know, mm -hmm. has to travel the, the western region from mm -hmm. Takradi to uh, <coughs> Zima side, the road. We are called rubber plantation miles. <coughs> and we're making ties, we're making inner tubes, we're making a lot of things. And he, 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 loved, he loved to drive there to see the, how the rubber trees are growing nicely and people were tapping the rubber, the rubber juice mm -hmm. and, you no, know, he loved it. He loved it, he loved it. And then the Akosombo, you no, know, yeah. he liked to drive to Akosombo from time to time and just take a view, stand on the hotel, that hotel, take a view at the place and enjoy. Nkuma loved beauty. To see nature, mm. the, 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 the dam, you know, and the forest, and nature, the way the artistic work, you sit, you stand there and watch it and enjoy the beauty, mm. what, the, what the dam has then gone up to. You know, and. Uh, uh, this, this is really so, nice. so with all this, the companies, he solved unemployment, a lot of people find jobs to do, even when you complete the university, you were being just begged to come to work because there are a lot of spaces for people to fill as far as jobs were concerned. Why do you think people plan to overthrow his administration? No, as for Nkrumah's overthrow, it's a different story. Tell me. Oh. Well, we are talking about the artistic work. Uh, I mean, you see, sometimes I want to work. know the things that went on before his overthrow. If you remember any little that you can share with us. But, I mean... Oh, which if, one? Any, 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 I mean, any part no, of it. Yes, apart from... Um, uh, when he disarmed the police officer, sat on him, rests, the remaining ones are history. If, if you remember some reasons why Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown, is it that the whites were afraid of him? Oh, Did they see him as a threat? What exactly were the reasons? No, when um, this, his, his speeches at the UN, the OAU, and mm -hmm. The copies, when you, after reading, you know, you know that <coughs> his, his only target was Africa. So anything which is not in favor of Africa or any nation who is not, who has no interest in Africa, uh, should be addressed, mm. you, you should address that person. Okay. You know, and by so doing, I think. He didn't sing the colonial master's voice. Mm. Mm -hmm. So he was running too fast. We, Left the voice. No, no, we have to. We have to. We have to run fast because we are in the age of speed. We are in the age, age of, of speed. speed. So we have to run fast. Let See. Me, let me quickly write this. But uh, please, please go ahead. I just want to write what you just said. Yeah. The age of speed. Yeah, when the age of speed, everything speed. Hmm. Wow. You, you see, um, we, myself and few other people, we've, we've just read about Nkrumah. We've seen videos and pictures. The reason why I keep asking about his overthrow is the lessons that I want the young people to learn, especially myself. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it contains a lot of learning, you know, things that we can put together as young people. I mean, from no, where uh, the, the police officer was uh, Ametepe, right? Ametewe. Ametewe. So when he sat on him, they came around, he was also killed, straight up to firing squad. What happened afterwards? No, then a chain of action, the bomb throwing <coughs> to overthrow him, you know. 
Is it the Kolungugu one we've been told, or different ones? No, the bomb, I missed the bomb on four occasions. Huh? The Kolungugu was the first. You were there? But I was filming the bomb. Yes, I know, you were there. Yeah. You missed that bomb. Inches away. Do it again, let me see how you did it. No, it's bigger than, it's bigger <laughs> than. <laughs> No, it, after the Kurungugu bombs, it's, it's, it's by God's grace that I'm still alive. What, what happened? How, how did that bomb explode? Tell me. Which one? The Kurungugu one. Then do we have time to talk about the overthrow? Yes, we'll okay. talk about it. Okay. No, the Kurungugu one, no, we're trying to, we're traveling to... Uh, 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 <coughs> Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. to meet President Yamugo. President Yamugo was then the president of Burkina Faso. And we were going to a place called Tengudugu. Okay. And we got to Gulungugu. But when, when we got there, it was raining, it was pouring heavily. So Nkrumah had to cancel the ceremony. There was okay. a school performance, two kids, school children's performance, and some other things. But we, we had to, we left because of the rain. So we got to Tengudugu and then spent three days there. But on our return, the weather was, was good. So uh, we got to Kulungugu and the kids were there to perform the, <coughs> the, 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 the right. cultural thing. And one thing Kuman loved to see kids performing. Mm. Whatever happens, he would just stop and come and cheer them up. Something, when, kids are, when kids are performing something cultural, it feels good. So, but unfortunately, the road from Tengudugu to, Kalo, uh, to uh, Kulungugu was not hard. Mm. And because the rain had not fallen, <coughs> there was heavy dust. So there were distances between the cars, you know. And when traveling, a, the, we had a formation. Okay. The security. The motorbike. The convoy formation. The co convoy formation. The motorbike, then the security, the police car, the security car, motorbike, then Nkrumah's car, mm -hmm. motorbike, then my car. Oh. Yeah, that is the formation. You enjoyed. I was there, I was working. <laughs> I was working. Really working. Yeah. Right behind the president's car. Yeah, well, after, yeah, after the president car, my car. And then the security car and other, the ministers and those things, you know. And my car, my car was the only car who could overtake the president when traveling. I could overtake the president and at times I would sit on top of the car to film, <coughs> to film the, you know, the, the traveling, the convoy. Mm. See, so... I was allowed to, once I was told I could overtake him and come back to my position, no, just move on. So when we got to Kulungugu, we knew that there was no stopping <coughs> there. Okay. But Nkrumah saw the kids and... Stopped. And stopped. And because of the dust, there were distances between the vehicles. So when he stopped, he sat in the car and waited. So when I got there, he was there, so I parked behind him. And between the two of us, we could talk. Mm. Even when, when driving, when driving, like this, okay. we could talk through the walking stick. You know, uh, there were signs he would give me that don't film this or film it or no. It's between the two of us. So I had a sign that I should film this. So I prepared my camera and went out. And then he came out and was going towards 
where the formation was. Mm -hmm. And then Captain Buckman was then the ADC. Okay. And Captain Buckman was following him, you know, with the with the security people. But the ministers, they were then behind. So they were now, they were then coming mm -hmm. because of the door, the door had to settle for them to come. So I was I was standing and then I composed a picture. Nkrumah came, his car was on the right side. I will listen to me. I will listen to me. Mm. I will listen to I'm me. I'm listening. But you are not seeing what I'm demonstrating. <laughs> his car, I was in the center, the car was on the right side of camera. And then Adam Afio, H.A. Kofi Crab, mm -hmm. came, the next convoy. And mm -hmm. they came from camera left. Okay. I was in the middle, and the, the action was in the background. The okay. school kids were performing something beautiful. And on my right side, Nkuma was moving towards the, the kids. On my left side, Adam and Phil and the ministers were moving. I was in the center. So it was, I had this appetite for mission. It was so beautiful. So I was just standing there to capture it because my lens was capturing everything mm. in details. Then, before Miriam Kuma passed and the ministers passed, then Captain Bokman, mm -hmm. you know, put Ed Nkuma down and put his body on him. Then, you know, Mary put at him. I, I'm going to shout, Bokman! Then, boom! Hey. And brother, so that boom, and the camera capture so many things falling pieces. Then later on, I discovered they were human parts. Ah, oh. the school kids were dead. That couldn't go. The school kids, but you see, when you, you are captured behind, all this on yeah, tape, okay. when you are behind the camera. Let me tell you one second. When you are behind the camera, fear leaves you. Fear is not out of, it goes out of your mind. Because you are looking through the camera, you want to capture everything. You are thinking of your artistic work, and death becomes meaningless. So I was shooting. I want to capture everything mm. because Buckman was still lying on Nkrumah. <coughs> the vehicles came and they quickly took Bokma and took uh, Nkrumah into the car. The dust, the past, the human past. I don't feel the dust, they were running, everybody was running. Mm. There was confusion. Was it, was it too close to Nkrumah? I mean, the distance from where the bomb, I mean, exploded? No, 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 I, I'm coming to that. Okay. See, then I was shooting. Then all of us, I found somebody lifted me with my camera. He just <laughs> held, held your two legs and, and then lifted me up. It was a policeman. And just, and because I was high, I was still shooting. <laughs> you know, I, it, it was like a crane. I had the advantage of a crane. So all of us, I was high. So I said, oh, thank God. You know, <laughs> so I was shooting, I was getting. Uh, High shots, they have better shots. But all of a sudden, I was just thrown into the car. <laughs> oh, I was like a, in, the, in, in, in that man's hands, I was like a toy. <laughs> I was then spongy. It's a serious matter, but yeah, you know, grandpa I was is making spongy, it. Spongy looking man, you know, you can see from that picture. I, you know, tiny little boy, very smart guy, and he just helped me, you know, threw me into the car. And closed the door, and boom, I was we're gone. So we came to Boku Hospital. Oh. Did any of the entourage go wounded or... Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I can't wait. So, 
they came <clears throat> and treated in Kuma. He had some, you know, the little, I was speaking to Bokma. Mm -hmm. Say, Bokma, what happened? Bokma had the palace a lot at the backside here. Oh. It was bleeding, but they treated it. And Nkrumah had few. Oh, so Kwame Nkrumah actually got some bruises. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had few. And uh, had Bokman, what happened? And he explained. <coughs> he explained that when the, <coughs> Sorry. the the bomb, it was a bomb. And Bokman saw the bomb. Okay. Coming. You see, because of military experience, okay. experience he noticed that there was a bomb come, coming. Someone had thrown something. And <coughs> that person was <coughs> hiding behind the school kids. <coughs> Do you see what I mean? Wow. Drink your water. Let me drink my water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that person was... Was right behind the school children. Was hiding. Hiding behind Behind them. the school children. And when he saw the... the <coughs> come here and all that members of the delegation, I think he got up quietly and, and threw, threw the bomb. See, from the back of the school kids and threw the bomb Nkrumah. So that was when Bachman saw the bomb. Mm. So he pushed Nkrumah down straight away and put his body on him. And he explained to me that when a bomb blows like that, it travels at a, at a tangent. It goes like this. So when you are standing, it will come straight to your chest. So oh, that's, why, that's why he put, on, put his body on it. But they were so close to the beginning point that it touched the, the back side. And that touched Nkrumah's side. So that could have been the end of Nkrumah? Yeah. And at that time, I was... The bomb had gained height. You know, it was going like this. And because I was, I'm a short man, I went under the bar. <laughs> you know, flew just a bit. It flew over my head. It didn't touch my camera because of my height. Went like this. That saved me. Oh. And this is the first one, the Kulungugu. That is the first number one. one. Then the number two happened where? At Flatstaff House. Was it before uh, Amatewe or after Amatewe? Oh, that's after Amatewe. I'm, I'm, uh, after Amatewe. Which, which part of the Flagstaff House? Is that right in the office of the president? Oh, uh, the open, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <coughs> We're talking about the, not the present Flagstaff House, oh, okay. the old Flagstaff House. Okay. You know, and the old Flagstaff House, from the street to, you know, there were open places and dignitaries were coming to great Kwame Nkrumah to, you know, to console, to, to, I mean, to uh, thank God for his life, you know, whether they were honest or not, but they, they all came mm. because Nkrumah was alive. See, and what the ministers sent somebody to come and get me because they, at the gate, there were the, I think, Bobobo people were performing there and said the, the, the performance was so nice mm -hmm. that they said I should be called to come and film. The performance? The, a minister, yes. Okay. So the man came and I said, Rocky, so I followed him. When I came, well, I saw the Bobobo people playing, and I was, I took some few shots. When somebody came to tell me, Kuma was calling me, was then looking for me, so I had to rush back quickly to, 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 to the compound. And immediately I left the Bobobo and stepped into the street, boom! Oh. 
the bomb went. And those bomb people, they all, oh, they died. Uh. Oh. So I went back. You have that also on tape? Okay, you no, have left the place. I've left the place. But the bomb went. Just immediately you left? Immediately I stepped in the street in front of the bomb people. It went. And the third one happened where? No, the third one was at the stadium. stadium. A crossbow stadium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A crossbow stadium. Where, you know, um, <laughs> um, a crossbow stadium, you know, there you know, was cultural performance. Mm -hmm. You know, the same connection with Nkrumah's recovery, Nkrumah's this thing. Safe arrival from Kulungugu. And then the bomb went there, went there, went up there too, among the drummers and the dancers. There too. But that one, Nkrumah was not close to him. Nkrumah wasn't there. Okay. Nkrumah wasn't there, but now they were attacking the public. The bomb to where we were attacking the public, you know, by, by putting fear. In the people. In the people. About Nkuma. About that Nkuma. That is a bad person. Yes. You no. Know, um, if you want to perform something to thank God for saving Kwa Nkuma, you will get the bomb. Oh. So they want to this. So that was the implication. This. Yes. <clears throat> so there was the bomb between the, the uh, front of house too. It was an evening thing. And the fourth one, which is the, the final fourth one? The fourth one was at Lucas House. Lucas House, UTC area, that mm -hmm. area. And the Kwame was there? No, he wasn't there okay. to the public. <clears throat> it went. It was a pity. That one? Yeah, all the, the, when all the bombs. You see the bomb blast like that. You know, the Lucas one. There was a lady from information services who was selling newspapers, no magazines, you know, information magazines. Mm -hmm. And where she had reached mm -hmm. was the place was the place where the bomb went. And this man just ran to our car, the uh, uh, Ghana film mm -hmm. car, and. We saw something hanging. No, it was the intestines. Everything was ah. hanging. Oh, yeah. Everything was there. So it just came and fell on our car like that. Oh, it was a pity. Anyway, let's forget about the one. Let's talk about his overthrow. Yes, so his overthrow. Yeah. So, see, people started, this bomb to us started putting fear on people. You know, by, by the bomb, mm -hmm. by the bomb, but through the bomb throwing. It was, it was very frightening. So anytime there was a performance, people feared to go. Mm. Yeah. So Nkrumah uh, also strengthened himself by, you know, being uh, detention without trial. That we remember there was something yes. like detention without trial. That's right. And that was. What created more hatred? You know, people were arrested without trial. And it, it was, it was uncomfortable. Mm. It could be anybody. It could be anybody, you know. Now, <clears throat> the actual overthrow. See, I wanted to go back, make a flashback. Mm -hmm. There was a gentleman whom Nkrumah made Ghana's representative at the UN. Mm -hmm. He served there for four years. And then at the end of the fourth year, the vacancy of the chairmanship of the UN, mm -hmm. the, the, the chairmanship became available. Okay. So, 
Nkuma, I reigned for him, and he was appointed wow. as chairman. Because the team fell between, um, it was the, a, a fight, a fight between Ghana and Sudan. Mm. And Ghana won. Ghana won, so he was made the chairman. And he was the first black man to sit in the chairman's chair. To occupy the, 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 chair, the chair of the chairman. The first black man. Wow. It was very, very important for Nkrumah. But, and I like your remit. Okay. Um, we're going for a break. <clears throat> um, I will return soon, and Grandpa will continue with the discussion. Please, we'll be right back. Yo, this is GH boy. What you are saying? The man is saying, Masa, you kill the baby. Ah, upe upe upe, what the man? What the? No kwase fix my ride a juma yukui ama or man for a bob remind a chin tanga a guya su o chrome ha papa se a jagana ha womuni a bim fwa womu sisi accident cars man yes a kaya manufacture ne ya womu bomo de a ye engine tuning overhauling body works oven spraying air condition service upholstery electrical works automatic gear box repairs maintenance in a general car service in bia se waka dada anase ase na pese wo ton fra wo mo won beto e dia ma o sesia wo mo wo to win kai beto wo ka ma o freeze o ye customer dia e na so the accident car ba won be ma ka fofo se twi enu so free she she fix my ride limited e chief pan wo akra academy school no enche mu ho odoko police quarters kwa no so atiko junction goyo fuel station no e chi kanishi odoko highway won crime fresh 0303 0303944880 0202227660 0505 Four zero five five six zero two zero. And our website www.fixmyrightghana.com. Fix my right. We own the finishing. The finishing. Hi, I am Richard Niamakwe. Every day, I meet and interact with many young people who are full of business ideas and passionate about bringing these dreams to life, to impact livelihoods, and supporting their communities through small businesses. However, these businesses are often shattered or simply remain pipe dreams due to absence of seed capital. So on the occasion of my 38th birthday, the Richard Quay Foundation is providing a free seed capital to 10 young ambitious entrepreneurs who have great business ideas. Let your creative ideas flow now and send along those smart business ideas to info at richardquayfoundation.org. At the end, an independent grand jury will carefully review all business ideas and select 10 most outstanding ideas to walk away with a whopping 25,000 Ghana cities each as seed capital. Six months after, Quick Angels Limited will provide mass substantial equity funding to those who have done something meaningful with their seed capital. All the best. Why any name Akumemun Sem? When a me a bayard, you say Akumemun Sem, dear, a ye be bray. She said, Ben, maybe I didn't seek a boy or baby, Nelson, and eh, or Bano, a ye nama. Sapa pepenso, and a or baby, what a baby, you know, Ben, maybe best any pay. No, what did not come in now, a man, or Nelson, so Ben, and you obey Akuma, Eddie, a grow. 
esana wofo a wanti wani anhwe enkoda no enti enu nti ena makos menima bedwafo ye ka se se oba bi de wafo ha obi mo se be ma bi de wafo ha obi mo we ye oba se awofo ejai wajeje mu na wasade ye no wanya fabra akoma mu nsem dwumade ye so na menima bedwafo entena so enu nti bomo dia na bra eye akoma 87.9 fm ye ne ye nuanom on your TV, a fed media, you live, a free area, do me a new about pounds, media nine, two forty, educacy three PM, and you did media bro, and you are the educacy theater. I come on, sir, a year intercept. I was young for me, the eighty pounds. No matter my quabba, I did but I'll be with her mukasi, me, me mukasi has say, a cuckoo dam, celebrities. And I've been ready, honey. I'm on in your bed. Mmm. Bibia, we do feed ye. It's so on your TV. But my dear, say, we be share a bit of her. Cause she's a bibia. Six p.m. Then we're done. Come on, man. We pay baby and pay me no. The celebrities never turn us here. I'm a bomb. My dear, I'm a bit in coma. I can't bravo my son. Yes, you're never baby. I will miss you. I've been with her. Eh, how long? Every set Tuesdays, you be repeating. Thursdays and so you be repeating. Can I want to say, I be be able to turn into on your TV. Cause here they be are at number six p.m. sharp. I be in with her. Me say dear day, dear day, pa pa pa. I be in with her. Cause here they be are six p.m. pe pe pe. I want on your TV so. Abinwaha, you may call Master Yasin. Aye, Aqua Gold Purified Drinking Water, Peacock Christ. Onye TV, ye dwino ho pa. All right, so um, we're back. Uh, we still have Reverend Doctor Chris Hesse. Uh, the official cinematographer, what I call that, of the state, joining our side for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's time. I mean, he was feeling everything, from the president to the ministry, to everything that happened around the first president of the land. He filmed it. Yes. So, Grandpa, the, fifth, the fourth bomb, and then the information services woman came around, and then you saw... That was her intestines, and then she fell bogum. From there, what happened? Oh, but we jumped that we were we were going to the UN. Okay, yeah, we went to the UN with uh, Kwame Nkrumah appointing the chairman. Yes, that was, it was we between were. Ghana and Sudan, and then yeah, Ghana, yeah, Ghana won. Yeah, the first time a black person chaired. Uh, Correct. UN Security Council meeting. Correct. Okay. okay. So can I pick it off? Yes, pick there? it from there. So it was the first ninety, time. but you still have your memory intact. I said that you were 90 years, but you still have your memory still intact. You remember do where think, we left? Do you think, do you think God, is, God is not an awam God? God is not an awam God. <laughs> God is not an awam God. So if you think that God is an awam God, <laughs> you are over to you. Grandpa, let's listen to you. Okay. So he was made the chairman mm -hmm. of the UN. And as I said, it was the first time that a black man had occupied that chair. Mm. So to Kwame Kuma, it, it was a dream, it was a wish. It come was something true. which mm. had come true. Yes. So, with the one year pass, he had to step down, the chairman. Mm -hmm. With the chairman, he was only one year. He's the secretary general who stayed for four or five years. Okay. Yeah. So that chairman, was it for the UN Security Council? No, no, no. The chairman, the UN Council. Council the chairman. Chairman. Oh, okay. He chaired the meeting. That's right. Have you been to the UN before? No, please. Okay, okay, okay. What was his name? Oh, Charlie. The Ghanaian chairman. Yes. Later. 
Later. Later. Okay. No, the name is not later, but I say uh, later. Will yeah, I know. You tell me the name later. Okay. Uh, tell you, what is it too early? <laughs> and uh, yeah. so Nkrumah called him. He said, you finished for one year. Mm. Now is the time to save Ghana. So come home. And I will make you the foreign affairs minister. Mm? Mm -hmm. So I will use your four years' experience as a representative there and the one year experience as the chairman of the UN. So you come and we all hold the act to build, to build Ghana. You saw the experience to build, let's lift Ghana up. So he came and was made the foreign affairs minister. And that was the end of Kwame Kuma. Ah, somebody he helped to chair the UN Council yeah. came in as a foreign affairs minister, and that began the end of Osage for Dr. Kwame Correct. Kuma. Correct. How? He united with the UN, the, the, the CIA, CIA. Okay. The CIA bought him. So by the time he came back as foreign affairs minister, he was, was a CIA man. Oh. Yeah. And at that time, the whole world was asking Nkrumah to go to Hanoi to promote peace. But that Hanoi trip was postponed four times. Four times. There were reasons. You remember any of them? No, no, I wouldn't ask for that one. I would you tell me off air. <laughs> yes, I would love to listen to that story. <laughs> off lunch. <laughs> See, it was postponed four times. So, I think America became confused. Why Kumar was postponing the CIA? They were pushing him. But he was refusing. So, you know what they did? They went into the fires and saw that Kumar had a friend. Of Franklin Williams. And the Franklin Williams was not a diplomat. They had nothing to do with was, I think it was a farmer somewhere. But they were mates in the university. In the with, States? In the Kuma. Yeah, Wolf and Kuma. Okay. They were good friends. So they made Franklin Williams the ambassador to Ghana. The US made Kwame no, Kuma's no, friend. No, no. No, the ambassador the US, to Ghana. The US, yes, the US. I thought it was to Ghana. Me. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure Kwame will be happy to have his friend. That day at Flash of House, it was like a Christmas. The whole of Flash of House was f full of joy. Franklin Willen had come out and they spent the long night. Talking and Frank, you know, it was sent purposely mm. to convince Nkrumah to go to Hanoi. Hanoi, you know, and this our man mm -hmm. was aware the foreign affairs minister. Yeah, he was aware that Kwame Nkrumah would be going. He, he, he had been told that Kwame Nkrumah would be traveling any time he traveled out. He should leave Kwame Nkrumah and come over to be, to be the president of Ghana. Oh. Yes. So the, the plan has been worked out beautifully. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he had a plan in his mind. So he came. And the hundred... Because of uh, the Hanoi trip was, came on, mm. and we went.
So you went with Kwame to Hanoi? Of course, anywhere I mean, you went, I mean, I was it's sure. automatic. So we went. And got to China. First of all, we went to Burma. Our first stop was Burma. Then to India. Then to Russia. Then to China. And then from China, when I went to Hanoi, when the message, the Chinese government told Commander a coup had been made in Ghana. Mm. So, Nkuma, so, okay. Okay, that's fine. So, we, <clears throat> the, the trip to Hanoi was cancelled. Now, <clears throat> we had to restructure and replan where, where to go. Mm. That was when Guinea asked Nkuma to come to to be with them, because they're good to read. That's Nkrumah to come. You know, because, you know, they were good friends. Mm. And Nkrumah had, had, had helped Secretary a lot. You know, when the French people were living, they took everything away, and they were broke. Mm. They left them poor. So Nkrumah gave them $10 million to start. So Nkrumah and Secretary were like this. So Nkuma asked, the secretary asked Nkuma to come and stay with him as co-president of Guinea. So we came to Moscow. And on our flight back from China to Moscow, that was why Nkuma told me the truth. He told me something which I've spoken, I've spoken, you know. He came to where I was sitting. And for the first time on that flight, the ministers, the important the VVIPs, mm -hmm. you know, nobody will be in the first class. Okay. And uh, the, the, at the first class, there's a seat at the back, on the right side of Nkrumah, at the back there. So anytime he wanted something, he would just lift, you know, give me a sign and I would, I would go to him. But this time, for the first time, all the ministers, all everybody, all the officials in the first class with him had left him. Oh. And they were in the economy talking to the no, I've been talked to the other members, the Ghanaian crew, the Ghanaian um, um, delegates. No, no, yeah, they, it was it was a, a charter flight. Oh, okay. Talking to the rest of the people there, laughing and joking. No, so Nkuma, I saw he pulled the curtain, look at them and close it back. Okay. And he came and sat near me. That could be heartbreaking. He came and sat near me. Then he asked me what I was writing. And I said, well, I, was, I was writing the, the, the scenes of the departure from, Hanoi, from, from uh, China, because I've shot, I've shot the mm -hmm. departure. So I was writing quickly so I wouldn't forget. Then he, he asked me, my son, what? What do you know about coup? They yeah, said, so when uh, I said that when an illegal when when an illegal government mm -hmm. when a military when a military overthrows an illegally elected government. Wow. And he said, my son, this is just the district meaning. Mm. <laughs> but the explanation you have is, is the district meaning. meaning. It is the district meaning. But 
what is going on in Ghana? The coup in Ghana <clears throat> is part of the coup so will happen in Africa. It will go on. It will go on. And Africa, Africa sinks into the dust. And out of the ashes, the new Africa will grow. That there will be coup d'etats in the various oh, yeah, African yeah, countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Africa will burn. And out of the ashes, ashes a the new, new Africa, Africa will emerge. Will, will, will grow. Grow. Yeah, the new Africa will grow. Hey, top of my face, said, do one thing, don't never stop shooting. Film until the film runs out. But the cinema camera speaks the truth. The cinema camera, your camera, it speaks the truth. So shoot, keep on shooting until it's over. Because these films you are shooting will be used to judge me whether I'm a good man or a bad man. Oh. So keep on shooting. And that was the last chat I had with him. He went and sat back. He took his book and he started reading. And then when we got to Moscow, the officials came and took him to the official car and left. That was the last time I saw him. Oh. So from that time... But, mm -hmm. but... When the coup came, mm -hmm. you know, that same night, I see my see. Mm -hmm. He was the foreign affairs minister. He was on the flight. Hmm? Ashimashi. Ashimashi. The Ashimashi. Uh, uh, okay, the one you said you tell me later. Yeah. Ashimashi. Uh, Ashimashi. Ashimashi. Oh, when mm -hmm. the guy was say Ashimashi. Ashimashi was on the flight with us. Eh? Mm. And that evening, he came to see Kwame Kuma. Oh. No, he was on the flight with us on this whole trip. He was the first in China. Nkuma took him along. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. E.S. Oh, okay. I see I E.S. I see I yes. Mm. And that evening he came to see him, to see Kwame Nkuma, and said, Sir, um, the NSC, mm -hmm. the following day, the OAU was being opened. Mm. And said, so, uh, I think I have to, I'm seeking your permission to travel to Addis Ababa to go and oppose the president of the, pre, 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 president of the o, uh, NSC because they illegally elected government. They came by coup and destroyed correct. So I want to go and strongly ob object to their presence. And Kuma said, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. So he authorized the ticket should be given to him. And he left. So as soon as he left. As soon as he left. So the following morning, mm -hmm. about 5 a.m., I wasn't sleeping. I was getting worried. You know, where, where do we go? You know. I'll take out my house, my wife. Mm. Then Kuma came to the hall. He saw me sitting down. He said, where is Asumasi? I said, oh, oh, I don't know. I've not seen him. Then he went back mm. to his apartment. And then about 78, I was just sitting in the dozy. But all the, all, the, all the other officials came. And he came, and he asked the same question. And a prominent person told me, oh, sir, last night you authorized us to give him a ticket to go to Addis Ababa. Mm. Then Ogoma smiled and said, as soon as he rerouted himself, instead of going to Addis Ababa, he rerouted himself to Accra. And he's on his way to Accra. 
Uh, he's on his way to Accra and he's attending his own funeral. He's wow. on his way to Accra and he will be attending his, his own, own funeral. funeral. So he left. Then we got to know that the CIA sent a message to Ankara, the Ankara, mm -hmm. that Asim Aziz was on flight, so and so from so and so, coming to Ghana to be made the president. Please arrest and deal with him. Oh, because that was the promise that was given to him. So Asim Aziz was arrested. Oh, uh, yes, straight. They sent Moak, Ankara. Mm -hmm. Then Moak, the plane landed. They sent Moak. They mentioned his name and came and was taken straight to the Moak at the tip of the, uh, the, 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 the stairs. Straight to someone. He was locked up there. At the someone. Ah, uh, Nipa. So see, when I came back, and mm -hmm. gave instructions that I should be sent from to London. You no, know, he gave instruction to Mr. Elliot, who was the ambassador in Russia. Mm -hmm. I should be taken to London, and that he will give instructions when I should come back. After some weeks, he said I should come. As soon as I came back, I was called to the police headquarters. That was where the NLC was meeting. The military com police were meeting. So they asked me to come and address them. They asked me questions. Yeah, because uh, I, I knew all of them. You know, they were past ADC to Nkuma. You know, so... I went to, mm. and then that was when the Ranka told me that, oh, uh, I see my see. Mm -hmm. And the minister who arrested will be coming to into journalism, the school of journalism, mm -hmm. you know, to, for interview, because they thought I agreed to say something. And the first person would be, I see my see. I see my see. So I should bring my camera to film him. And all that I've, I've told you mm -hmm. about the CIA and all these trips, he said all himself. So that's why I'm talking that that's an authority. That's right. It's on film. You still have copy? It's, it's on. You, you, st you still have it? Later. Later? Okay. Yeah. It, it is on, I got it on film. He spoke it. And I got it on film. That the CIA gave him money and did this and did that and, you know, the chairmanship or all those things. He spoke everything. And you filmed it. I filmed it and now I'm speaking it. So one day I can, so, I can, I can have that, that, that video to watch. Oh, if you, you know, it depends on the price. Uh, how much it's going to cost, don't worry. We need to watch that video. Thank you so much, Grandpa, for your time. I really appreciate your time. That's Reverend Dr. Chris Hesse. The, well, I mean, people call him the personal cinem cinematographer of a slide for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, but I call him the state cinematographer. He's worked here where we are sitting for 45 years, right? He's worked in this environment for 45 solid years. God bless you. Ten years as a managing director. I pray to God to add more than ten years to your age so that I can be the MC to your 105 birthday. <laughs> Thank you and God bless you, sir. Yo, uh... <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 